Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how you can make a better impression with people and have presence in a group that makes people trust in what you're saying? That's what we'll talk about today. Whenever it feels uncomfortable to tell the truth, that's often the most important time to tell it. Jennifer Lopez. Today, we're going to talk about the book by Amy Cuddy, Presence, Bringing Your Boldest Self to Your Biggest Challenges. A lot of people talked about this book when it came out in 2015. She did a TED Talk where she talked about the power pose. Some people said it wasn't true. Then there were other studies that said it was true. And we'll talk about some of this as she mentioned in her book. When she talks about having this boldness and this authenticity to ourselves, she talks about it in terms of having our body saying the exact same message that is coming out of our mouth and how important it is that we have that consistency between us. You've probably met salespeople in your life that will say one thing, I'm just here to help you find the best house. But their body language is showing signs of deception. They're not saying the same thing with their body or their facial expressions that they're saying with their words. And you find them disingenuous. You don't trust them. Maybe you were buying a car and you know that to trust car salesmen all the time. There's even more reason not to trust them because what they're saying isn't matching their body. Our bodies give us away in a lot of different ways. We say we're happy for a friend or we're excited to do something and our body is showing exactly the opposite message. In order to communicate to other people, whether you're doing public speaking or just talking to someone at work or just talking to a friend, you have to make sure that what's happening with your body is exactly what's happening with your message. Sometimes it's not as easy as it sounds. You think, I just need to be genuine. But I know people who are so uncomfortable speaking in public, whether it's one-on-one -on -one to other people or in a large group, they look jittery, they look nervous, they look like maybe they're hiding something, when really probably what they're just hiding is the fact that they're an introvert and they don't really love public speaking. Sometimes it's really easy to get too far when it comes to body language. You'll see someone say, well, did you see what they were doing with their face? That's a true sign that they were lying. That's not necessarily true, because if you have someone who's feeling greatly uncomfortable and in the police drama, they say, see, that person's a murderer. Look how uncomfortable they were when they were talking to us. They were nervous about being asked questions by the police in a murder investigation. You can't always parse those things out in that way. Yes, the person's feeling nervous. You just don't have any idea what it's about. In order to have that true conversation, we'll have to make sure that those two things match up. Part of the problem is when it comes to having our bodies show the same thing that our speech is trying to say is sometimes we're really nervous or sometimes we don't feel like we should be there. I'm not the one who's supposed to be giving this speech. I'm not the person who's supposed to be doing this presentation. I don't know why I'm at this conference or people keep introducing me to other people there, but I feel really uncomfortable. People feel like frauds all the time. I swear that if you listen to half the podcasts that are out there, most of them are talking about the imposter syndrome, where people think they don't deserve the thing that's happening to them. If they got a promotion, if they're getting married, if they started a new business, whatever it is, they don't feel like they deserve the very thing that they're doing it makes them feel very jittery. One of the first things that you can do in order to be more genuine in your communication is relax. You have to understand how your brain works when you're feeling agitated, when you're feeling even just nervous about something, your body's going nuts. And so if you feel safe and relaxed and you have nice, slow breathing, you look like you're relaxed, it comes out into almost any communication that you're doing as being more genuine. And it's hard to feel relaxed, particularly if you're someone who doesn't like giving talks in public. That's not how most people are. And so what you have to do is figure out how to talk your brain down. How can you send this message that will make you feel safe, that'll make your heart rate go back to normal? Sometimes it's just a matter of realizing that the people in the audience are not your adversaries. When we have customer conferences and I get people come to me and they're really nervous to talk to our customers, we have the best customers on the planet. No one's there to pick them out. 
And if you screw up, if you stumble over your words, our customer community is cheering for them. Whether they're a person in my company or a person in the customer community group, everyone's there to help each other out. And that's the case in most types of presentations or discussions you're having. Even when you're going in for a job interview, the people who have you in on that job interview are hoping you do well. They're looking for someone to fill this position. They're not there to make you feel terrible. They're not there to tear you down. They're honestly looking for someone and they hope you're that person. One of the first things you can realize anytime when you're trying to have presence with a group of people, understand that for the most part, they're on your side. They hope you do well. And they know too that if they were up there talking and they screwed up, they would want the audience to be nice to them too. So everyone understands that when this isn't something that's going very well, we're not laughing. We're not making fun of you. So one of the things she suggests is trying breathing exercises, taking a slow, deep breath, pause, and then take another long, deep, slow breath. That type of breathing does something to our nervous system that tells your brain, I'm not nervous. And if you can do this in and out breathing a couple of times, it will actually reduce your anxiety. It will increase your optimism. It will make you feel like you have more control over your emotions. And so whatever it is you're doing, whether a job interview, a public speech, or a presentation, you'll feel better about it and it will go better. So this is where Cuddy comes in and talks about some of her research that was done in 2010. She showed that by improving your body posture, people can improve their sense of empowerment. And that's where the power pose comes in. They had people in the study observe some photos of people who were sitting and standing different ways and asked to replicate some of the poses they saw in those photos. So if someone was standing up, their arms crossed in front of them, or they were lounging back in a chair, or they were in less powerful poses like slumped together, crossing your arms in front of your body so that you're really tight in a little ball, or just being slumped over with your arm on the desk looking like you're depressed. Those poses suddenly had an effect on how they acted. The people who were in these power poses were willing to take more chances, do things that were more adventurous. And the people who were doing the less powerful poses were more stressed out, more conservative or nervous about doing something risky. The actual pose themselves affected how they were going to act in the next challenge. It really is important to have that presence about you, that power pose in front of you. So not only so the people around you feel like you're more confident or feel like you're more trustworthy in what you're saying, but so that you believe it yourself. Your body is telling you, I got this. I'm ready for this. I can do this. And you get there by increasing your presence in your pose. You look bold. Bolder people take up more space. They have their arms out. They may be sitting in a wider stance. They may be standing up with their arms on their hips. Whatever it is, they're looking powerful. And the number one person they're convincing of that is themselves. If you look powerless, if you look like you're just trying to shrink in the room so no one could possibly see you, maybe you're sitting in the corner in a little ball, or it looks like you're trying to take up the least amount of space possible, it's not only going to convince the other people in the room, you're scared, you're nervous, you want to be left alone, you're going to convince yourself of that. And that's the most damaging thing you can do. They also say that it's important not only to take up space, to have your shoulders up, to have your chest open, to be taking these deep breaths. Maybe your feet are out there. You're not shifting around and looking nervous. Your legs aren't crossed. You always have to make sure that you keep your eyes looking at the group. If you're looking down at the table, if you're looking away and not looking at people, it can also make you look nervous as well. And so you want to make sure you keep that eye contact and that bold presence that you have. It's going to make you feel better, not just everyone else in the room, too. And Amy Cuddy wants us to know that this doesn't really have anything to do with being extroverts or introverts. Introverts have that same ability to have presence. It just may look a little bit different. The number one person that you're trying to convince that you're confident, that you're honest, that you're bold is yourself. 
And one of the things that we have to stop doing too is getting into this self-doubt. It's really easy when you're giving a presentation to start picking it apart almost after every slide, after every card. We think we're screwing this up. We're messing it up. We're constantly analyzing ourselves. It gets us into this crushing self-awareness, she says. Can go through a million different ways of how we could have done this better, said this better. I shouldn't have told that joke. I should have said it like that. I should have cut the speech in half. And you can do that forever. And everybody does it. And by doing these postures and by doing this breathing, we are convincing ourselves and everyone around us that we're genuine in what we're saying. She says it's important to realize that presence isn't about charisma. Sometimes we think that there are people out there who have presence. They'll say, oh, you know, that person, they're just, they're sparkling. They, they're really good at this. They have a lot of magnetism to them. There are people out there who are just amazingly captivating. Some famous people out there who, when you're in the room with them, they look you in the eye and make you feel like you're the only human being in the world. But that's not what this is about. We're not talking about that magnetism that some people have as a gift. We're talking about being ourselves. And finding our presence is about finding that thing that's inside us that's honest and connects with other people. And anyone can do that. Making sure that the root of who you are comes out. She says, too, that it's not an all or nothing kind of thing. You don't have to say, well, I was totally present. I was really out there. I showed myself. You know, it's a scale. Sometimes we're good at it. Sometimes we're not very good at it. Sometimes we have to start all over again. And sometimes we screwed up or we got really anxious about something and there's always another time or there's always a moment to collect ourselves. We can have it. We can lose it. We can get it back again. And it's important to keep working on it so that you can have it again. Amy Cuddy also says that it's really important when we're trying to gain presence that we actually listen to other people. Because if we're not really listening to other people and we're not really responding to the thing that they're saying, we come off as uninterested. We don't really care. It might make us look like we are not genuine in our concern for other people. Internally, it may make us really not enjoy whatever it is we're doing. The paradox of listening is that when we relinquish the power, it suddenly makes us more powerful. We stop talking and we listen. People realize that we are trustworthy. They realize that we care about them. When we listen to other people, we get really useful information. I can't tell you how many training classes I've heard in my life where the trainer is not listening to the people in the audience. And so they're saying, I'm scared. I used to be a great nurse. And now I'm worried I'm not going to be good at my job anymore because the software came into our office. What the trainer who's not listening might hear is, you think you're not going to learn this software. You'll learn it. I'll teach it to you. It'll be fine. They completely dismissed the fact that this person was scared for their job. And so once you really listen to someone, you can respond to them in a way that helps them, that makes them feel better about whatever it is that they said. You have to realize where people are at. And if you don't listen, you'll never know. And then as soon as you start to listen, they realize that you're on their side, that you're really for them, that your goals are not me versus you, but our goals together. It's not me trying to teach you the software so everyone in the company is happy. It's me trying to help you feel good about this. I want you to feel good about this. I want you to not go into work scared because you think you can't get this done. And once you've listened to people and you've accepted what they've said, you heard what they said, it will help those other people accept and adopt, she says, what you're saying. They will be more likely to commit to what you've asked them to do. There will be less negative outcomes to what's happening. They'll feel understood and they may become your biggest champions of not just you, but whatever it is you're trying to represent. Once people feel like you've listened to them, they're going to be more willing to listen to you because now they got their true fears off their chest and now they're able to really hear you. Summary. Try to find ways so that your body matches the things that are coming out of your mouth. Make sure that there's a consistency of a relaxed, 
calm nature about yourself so that you feel good, the people around you feel like you're authentic, and what can help you feel that way is deep breathing, powerful poses, taking up a big amount of space, not slumping in the corner in the room. It also means that you're not stuck on your phone. Have that presence with your body so that you can convince the audience you're authentic and the biggest audience out there you're convincing is your own self. Two, remind yourself throughout the day to have a good posture, to keep your body language open and to give that power pose a try every once in a while when you're in a room or in a place by yourself, do a power pose. Be expansive. Stand out there like Wonder Woman so you feel better about what you're doing. Three, don't doubt yourself, tear yourself apart, and make yourself feel anxious by analyzing everything you do, everything you say, and how you said it. Keep positive about the things you're saying and the things you're doing. And if you find that you're not saying them in the right way or doing them in the right way, that you correct immediately. This is not an all or nothing thing. Just try to keep presence as much as you can. Four, remember to listen. Hearing other people will help them hear you, will make them feel empowered. And in fact, shows your power because you're willing to listen, hear other people and respond to them in a way that makes sense to the conversation you're having. It is a sign that you are confident when you're able to listen to other people and respond to them where they're at. They will feel heard and they will become a true ally of yours. Challenge, try the power pose. Wait till you're in a quiet place by yourself before you have a meeting with someone or a discussion that's going to stress you out. Try doing some power poses to see if it makes you feel more empowered and more capable to have this tough conversation. Then when you're in the meeting, Try maintaining the power pose by taking up more space, having your arms out wider, and generally having more eye contact and more interaction with the person. And see how you feel afterwards. And now for our fun entertainment advice of the week. And this quote comes from Monsters, Inc. Oh, how many times do I have to tell you? It's all about presence, about how you enter the room. Well, that's true. It is about presence and how you enter a room. And monsters, they really know their stuff. I appreciate you listening. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell another person about it. Thanks so much and have a good week.